Hey everybody, welcome to Workforce Gaming. I'm Brad, here with Doug. Hi. If you look at our videos from E3, we purposely skipped one because we wanted to have a bit of a bigger context for this, and that's the Ubisoft one. We specifically didn't talk about that. We kind of held off for a little bit because we noted there was a big thing that kind of came up with that, specifically with Assassin's Creed. That was one of their major games that they showed there, and that was where they spent a lot of time. And this is something that kind of rubbed Doug the wrong way, so to speak. So <laughs> yeah. I kind of want to talk about this a little bit because I'm, I'm curious to see why this bothers you so much because I could see it as being an issue. And that's the concept of background numbers in games. So yeah, looking in the context of that, Assassin's Creed Origins changed up Assassin's Creed in a lot of ways from the look of the couple trailers and gameplay demos that they did. But one of the main ones is now weapons, you're picking up new weapons, you're picking up new gear. And this idea of loot to a point and leveling to a point where numbers yeah. play a bigger and bigger role. Um, having just played Assassin's Creed 3, I used the same tomahawk from the moment I started that game to the moment I <laughs> ended that game, and it didn't matter at all what weapon I had in my hand if I happened to drop that and pick up a yeah. sword or whatever. Whereas this now, you specifically see him picking up a level 25 whatever that has a plus 6 whatever. So yeah. I guess to start with, where... Assassin's Creed, I do see an issue with that, but overall in context of gaming, what is kind of your concern with that? I like to play games because I like to sort of like get lost in a world. I like to sort of like, I like I like when they when the creators sort of present this like world in front of me and these gameplay aspects in front of me and you just sort of like dive in. And then there's sort of this sort of like lie they tell you that this video game world is a real world. Like we've created this world, we have these characters, we have this lore, we have this thing. It's sort of this, it's, it's kind of like a lie we tell ourselves like for, while we're playing this game, we can believe that this world exists. And I think what happens is like when you start bringing numbers into that into that equation, your lore is like it, what I think it does. It just sort of strips away all of that. It strips away your characters. It strips away your lore. It strips away any sort of story you have. It just exposes kind of like the mechanics and stuff underneath. It's kind of like if you went to Small World and they popped off all the Small World children and you saw the mechanics moving beneath it. Gotcha. It's no longer. It's a, it's a little bit too much behind the curtain, like Wizard of Oz, like what's behind the curtain. You don't want to see that. You just want to believe it's the big giant floating head wizard, not the little short dude work, working the levers. Exactly, exactly. And I think there's there's a sort of like weird trend lately where we're starting to see like that behind the door. Like it doesn't matter that you that this this sword you picked up is from the great cathedral that has been buried for a thousand years. You pick up that sword and it's like, okay, it has a plus fifty attack bonus, which means that it will do X dimes damage to this character. So it's it's this weird back and forth that I'm seeing. I think I think the point where I saw it like really stick out to me was this, that was Assassin's Creed Origins. Was he's sneaking around and he sees a guy clad in armor, and instead of saying, "Oh, that guy looks tough. He's clad in armor. I don't know if my guy could take him on right now." He's like, "Oh, he has a level 25. Like there's literally a 25 hovering over his head that's in red." He's like, "I can't take him on now because I'm only a level six or something like that." And I was just like immediately like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, I, I don't I don't want to know that. I want to, as a player, okay, my guy, I, he's currently wearing, like, I don't know, a loincloth or something. I don't know. Just something, very little armor. And I see a guy who's, like, super clad in armor. I'm like, you know what? My guy just seems like he couldn't fight that guy. It's not, like, in my head, okay, he's a level 25, I'm level 6. It's this sort of, like, okay, my character just looks weaker than him. So it's, I and like, maybe I don't know that until I actually attack him and then he destroys my ass. Like, I like that. See, now I think that's cool. you're getting into Bloodborne <laughs> in my mind because Bloodborne doesn't put the levels above anybody, correct? Yeah, no, it doesn't. So yeah, exactly. you're, you're getting into this Bloodborne thing where you're just like, I, mm, I don't, that guy looks big. I don't, I could barely take on the wolf a second ago. This is a wolf yeah. that's three times bigger. I probably just need to try and sneak around that versus approaching it head on. And you want to basically from context, understand that versus putting a number above it is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think Bloodborne and Dark Souls actually does a pretty good, pretty good um, way of like hiding the numbers because like you only really mess with the numbers when you're in that like leveling up thing. And then once you're actually playing the game, like once you're actually in the gameplay, like, yeah, there's damage numbers, but really it's all about, you know, you playing. It's not you're not really messing with numbers too much. It's like they kind of separate them out. Um, well, I feel like Assassin's Creed, maybe Destiny, um, I think that new ship game also, looks like you're just constantly playing with that numbers game stuff. And I just, I don't like that because it's like, because I think you're stripping, like, like I was saying before, I feel like you're stripping away those characters and you're making it about numbers and you're not making it about you you got you kind of get what i'm saying yeah, you're kind of looking at me like <laughs> i get what you're saying but my my question then is is you brought up the example of like the the great sword of whatever how yeah. how do you know that's better then cuz i guess in in a game like assassin's creed 3 right you're using one weapon the whole time in yeah. the example of 
say a horizon right you're switching yeah. weapons you're changing out weapons your weapons are getting stronger what is your opinion on that then because either your character is going to get stronger or you're just going to use the same weapon the whole time you know what i mean like should there yeah. be that leveling up factor is that your concern or is it just the like putting the numbers out there like do you get what i'm saying I, th- I think putting the numbers out there, I, I like I like like using a weapon and realize like, oh, wow, this is stronger. I think Horizon actually does it pretty well because I think like a basic arrow, I think when you start shooting like a basic arrow, it does like 11 damage. And by the end of the game, it does like 17 damage or something like that. It doesn't yeah. do a lot more damage. But what, what Horizon does is it expands your toolbox. It doesn't make like your single weapons more powerful. It just gives you more weapons to play with. So you almost it, just it want of, stuff your, locked your skill away. Setting. Right. So um, like you want stuff locked away. So... For the first hour of the game, I'm only shooting my basic arrow. Then all of a sudden I get my fire arrow, right? And then I get yeah. my armor piercing arrow three hours later. And then I get my slingshot. And then you basically, so what you're saying is that instead of giving you access to everything up front, right? And saying, these are your six weapons you can use. You can kind of yeah, level yeah. them up as you go. You want to go, I can play the game with this weapon. Then add the next one. Then add the next one. Then add the next one. So you almost get that feeling of getting built up naturally versus just seeing the like, well, my bow is plus two. Now it's plus eight. Exactly. It, it, like, I mean, they do have like a little that, that plus one bow plus whatever, but it isn't that isn't the main thing. Like the gameplay is changing as you as you go, as you excel through the game. Your number like the numbers aren't changing. You're not doing I mean, you are doing like a little bit more damage. You're doing this, but you're becoming better as a player. Your skill set is expanding as opposed to, wow, this thing now does three or four times the amount of damage. And like, that's the only reason I'm better now is because I played it for a long time. That is true, because I feel like if you look 10, 15 years ago, um, there's not a lot of that. Like. We just we recently just did our near automata review or whatever it's called. Um, if you yeah. compare that with, I'm going to go back to Devil May Cry because I feel like the combat's similar. That's fine, yeah. Devil May Cry One had none of that. You got your sword, no, you got your no. pistols. As you went through the game, you picked up different weapons, and it was kind of up to you to pick which one you wanted to use. Right? You had your quicker moving yeah. weapon, you had your heavier weapon, you had your base sword. Um, versus this game, from talking with you about it, it's you get your different weapons, but each weapon has a number set to it and you put the chips on it or whatever and your weapons get stronger as you go that way. So you basically yeah. prefer that old school, original Devil May Cry versus this new near style of progression. I mean, I, I think I just, I like the idea of progression as gameplay is changing and evolving as you play the game. I think, I think when I see a game like Assassin's Creed where the only way that you're going to beat that guy is that if you get the same level he is, that doesn't mean you have to play the game better. That doesn't mean you have to use different tools, whatever. It just means you have to play long enough that your current tool set has the numbers behind it are suddenly like you have that integer plus 45 and like, that's it. Like to me, that's, that's like a weird false barrier. It's not a barrier of skill. It's just a barrier of time. Um, and I feel, I feel like I can see like a lot of games going, cause I think, um, what's the, what's the other game that does that? Um, oh shoot. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, but I feel like a lot of like, 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 uh, clicky games, like, you know, phone games, like free to play yeah. games do that as well, where you're not, nothing's changing. Nothing's changing gameplay wise. Just your numbers are getting bigger, which gives you um, access to more things. Exactly. Exactly. And it's not, but like even those more things, it's just more things. They aren't changing the gameplay up. You're just, you're getting those more things to get more things. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just, they're just bar rate. It's just like raising bars. It's just getting points for points sake, as opposed for, I'm getting better as a player. I am. I almost feel like this is this is trending with the trend of everything needs an open world and everything needs to be have directions you can go and you can take things the way you want to. Because if you think back to games yeah. 10, 15 years ago, none of them had the the the, necess- the necessity for that. Mm-hmm. No, there were no games like a or at least no big name popular game. I'm sure there were one or two trying this kind of stuff, but you didn't have a game like um a horizon or like uh xenoblade chronicles where you're just walking around the world and you see this big thing you're like i need to come back to that later everything was much more on a linear path of once you yeah. do this okay you've probably mastered the game you've put enough time and you've gotten to the point where we can progress you to the next thing and i think yeah, yeah, yeah. i think losing that gated off feel and i think a lot of games are nervous to that gated off feel because i think a lot of things look at games like fallout the witcher and how successful those games are going and like oh if we just open yeah. everything up from the beginning you can just go wherever you want and do whatever you want, but yeah. then you ne- you need a system to keep people out of certain areas, and I think that's where those numbers become a necessity because instead of saying like you can't go in this cave, I, I can't do yeah. that now. I want it, I want my game to be open. So instead, I just put a level fifty five yeah. troll in front of it or whatever, and now you don't have a way to get in there because that troll is going to kick your ass. 
And I honestly think that's okay. I think if you just didn't tell me it's a level 55 troll, I'd be okay with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So essentially you just don't want to see the numbers. You want Bloodborne where it's like, there are parts of that game that you clearly can't do at the beginning, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's not readily displayed to you. Your issue is, but see, this is also my thing. Cause you don't play games with HUDs and stuff, which messes with my brain <laughs> a little bit. You just want that like clear, Chris, <laughs> this is my real life. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, that's, that's, that's an entirely, that's an entirely different conversation. I'd love to get into one day. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think it's just that because that troll is no longer a big domineering troll, it is just a number bucket that I need to defeat. That's like not even defeat; it's a number bucket that I need to have equal number two. Like it's no longer it's no longer this big troll is blocking my way. It's just this big. I gotta waste some time to get to that number is, is blocking my way. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you don't have to be a better player to get to fight that troll. <laughs> You just have to have better equipment. Yeah, but that's another thing is you could go into like how skill based should your game be. Like I'm thinking of yeah. uh, Mega Man games where it's you can pretty much pick any world you want to, yeah. but beating other worlds before that's going to make it easier. But nowhere in the game does it tell you like you need to go to the forest, then the ice, then this. It's just yeah. pick whichever one you want to. If you're struggling with it, you better go pick another one and hope you get like when you beat that boss, you get their new equipment or whatever to go into this world. And now, OK, maybe that's a little bit easier. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't it doesn't like tell you that yeah, it exactly. It doesn't tell you like those 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 enemies like in your head, you know, okay, it takes two shots ahead, but they don't have like a little health bar above their head and you do two pews and it's like fifty damage, fifty damage. Well if I come back later, I'll do seventy five damage or a hundred damage. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like it's that like same consistent damage. I think Horizon did it really, really well because it doesn't really tell you when you're ready to fight those big monster things. Because like the first time you fight a T Rex, like or whatever the thing's called, it's a T Rex. <laughs> <laughs> it's a T Rex with lock or rocket launchers on it. Like you get decimated oh yeah like and you and you really don't know when you can go back and fight it it's just like you just have to like you know at some point like ah, maybe i'm good now and like if you're if you play really well you can fight it like it doesn't matter what it is i feel like games like i think xenoblade and i think final fantasy 12 i think that's a recent game not really a recent game because it's being remastered um those games do it's not like you need to play better it's like you just need to hit that level i think you even stopped xenoblade because of that didn't you um yeah I got to the point where I was kind of underleveled and it was just kind of like I I would need to grind a little bit to get to the next part of the game and I don't do grinding yeah. very well so but yeah so that's why I'm saying like grinding like what's the point of grinding like you're not getting better as a player yeah you know what I mean and and it's just it's, it's cornering off games and it's making games inaccessible um yeah. but at the same time I think that again it all comes down to what you want for your game I think there's a lot a yeah. lot of this is basic game design conversation of what's your conversation going to be when you start this game? Because in Xenoblade, it's very purposeful of, well, I skipped a whole bunch of side quests, right? I, I tend to yeah. go the, like, uh, what <laughs> what is the least amount of resistance I can do to get through this game? Not necessarily because I like it yeah. or don't like it, but because for the most part, I'm normally more interested in the story than getting grandma's cookies from the baker or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so in my mind, that's that's a barrier to me. But I know there are other people who will sit there and I have a couple of friends who will sit there and they will do every damn side quest in that game. <laughs> and have way more platinum trophies than us. <laughs> yeah. And they will do every damn side quest in that game. And then they'll they'll be like, oh, yeah. And then I did the ending 89 hours into the game. And I'll be like, I, I did the ending 12 hours in the game. Like, I don't know what you were doing for forever, but yeah yeah exactly and it's just and, and i feel like once you put in that 89 hour, like sometimes even that system it's like once you get way 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 higher numbers and it's like a sense to get through it's like what's the point then way it's like the reward is like the game is now easier yeah instead of like that that's that, to me that's like a weird reward is like the game is now like the more you play the game the more the game becomes easier for you which is that that seems kind of counterintuitive like i feel like games should be harder as you play them more yeah not harder necessarily but like this, well, this, it should be it shouldn't be getting lower and it, and it leaves the balance <laughs> determined but at the same time again a lot of this goes into like what a player wants it leaves the balance up to you i can know yeah. you know i know for the most part if i just go that main path through a game the game's probably yeah. gonna be hard as hell when i get to the end of it which i personally like like i like a game that's got a little yeah. more challenge to it now a game like xenoblade where it pretty much was inaccessible a little bit different story but i like the little bit more challenge to going like oh i did all these side quests like oh yeah i killed six of these before this isn't a boss battle anymore you know what i mean so yeah. i think a lot of that becomes a player choice of you can start a game and know if i do all these side quests first the game's gonna be pretty easy pretty relaxing i'm not gonna have to worry about it because i can kind of do my eight level two quests my nine level three quests my four level four yeah. whatever and then you get to okay i kind of ran out of those let's go back to the main game and you're like okay this is nice and easy versus 
all right, this is hard as hell, but I haven't done any of my side quests. Yeah, I, I yeah, but to me that's like that's so weird. That's so weird though. Like the more you play the game, the easier. Like that. Then that's what I'm saying. Like the only way to keep the game in a moderate challenge is to not play the lot of the game. Yeah, which. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. There's a <laughs> lot of weird things you can get into this. This is, I think, this is a much yeah. bigger conversation than I thought it was when we started. I just thought it was you just being pissed that you don't like math. But <laughs> no, I don't. I don't mind math. And like, I'm, like there's definitely certain games where like numbers. I'm like, I'm totally okay with. But I just think like, I think you're doing a real disservice to your characters, your story, your lore, or whatever. If you start showing like, like yeah, once you pull that all away and start showing That's, the clockwork underneath, that is it. true. Because I guess even Xenoblade Chronicles is a game that I love. And yeah. looking at X, there's a lot of monsters in there where I don't even think of them as monsters. I think of them as numbers. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. those big those big things, those are those are like 50s. Like, I need to get to 50 and then I can fight that. Versus looking at it as, oh my god, look at that cool monster. Like, that's crazy. And I think yeah, yeah, ex- it, it just changes your perspective on what you're doing. Are, am, I, am I doing addition and subtraction or am I fighting a giant monster? It does take you out of there a little bit. Now, I feel like it's it's kind of a personal thing. I think for me, for the most part, I can yeah. look past that. And I think if you brought this up, never would have even came into my mind before, but I think it's one of those things yeah. where person to person, it's going to depend. Some people are going to be able to look past yeah. it. Some people are going to be like, Oh, okay. So I'm a, I'm an eight and eight, eight's greater than six. And we just turn it into inequalities. Yeah. It's, it's one of the large reasons I don't like turn-based games and it's not because they're turn-based, but it's because it's like, it totally brings me out of like, totally breaks me out of that, especially because not just the turn-based combat, but because of all the stat stuff underneath it, it's like, I don't, I don't, I get that you're trying to like simulate a character becoming stronger as they go along, but I like the idea of a character becoming more skillful as they go along, as opposed to just raw strength. You know what I mean? Cause raw strength to me, when it's simulating a game is the same gameplay. You just do more damage yeah. while becoming a more skillful character is you expand your toolbox or you can use your tools more efficiently as opposed to just them being the same tools that just hit harder. Yeah. So I guess, I guess that I guess that's I guess that's like that's pretty much it. It, it kind of it kind of weirds me out. I'm like because Ubisoft I see is like kind of the big one, especially I don't think we even brought up Skull and Bones, but Skull and Bones showed a lot of that like health bars all over the place, like yeah. the damage, like there's damage numbers popping up, and it's like you're no longer a pirate ship game. You're now a math simulator. Does a ma- yeah exactly a, a, yeah, and it's not even as, you know. I mean, if you're gonna do that, just make another math blaster. But they're not gonna do it. <laughs> <I will. laughs> No, no, that, that's really, that's being mean about it. That's being mean about it. I think that's it. a good yeah. place to wrap this up. So we are Workforce Gaming. Um, you can find more of us on YouTube or wherever you listen to this. Uh, follow us, subscribe, all that stuff, and we'll see you later.